and welcome to part two of my Tales from the Cryptothon. Last time around, I talked about how I thought the first film, Demon Knight, is actually an underrated movie that managed to find an entertaining balance between comedy and horror, helped along by a strong cast that were clearly having fun with their roles. You fucking hold dunk, po dunk, well then there, motherfuckers! But what a lot of people don't know is that Demon Knight was actually supposed to be the second of a planned trilogy of Tales from the Crypt movies. The first planned movie, Dead Easy, was supposed to be a New Orleans zombie romp, and the third movie, Body Count, was an urban retelling of Frankenstein. Ultimately, they decided to make Demon Knight first, and instead of those other two movies, they made this one, Bordello of Blood. So will Bordello of Blood be as fun and entertaining as the first movie? Nope! Ah well, at least the filmmakers realized that dumping Demon Knight in theaters in the middle of January was a mistake, and instead released Bordello of Blood at a more appropriate time. August. Just in time for Women's Equality Day. So like the first movie, it opens with the classic Tales from the Crypt theme, so... Wait, what the fuck? Oh, I'm sorry, I seem to have put in Tales from the Crypt Raiders of the Lost Ark by mistake. And no wonder you don't know where you're going, you're looking at a map of Middle Earth, you idiot! Oh, never mind. By the looks of it, they really are digging in the right place. Well, whatever treasure they're looking for, I sure hope it's worth it. What the fuck? <laughs> I think that's the same reaction audiences had on this movie's opening weekend. That's your goddamn treasure. You bet it is. This here is the most horrible woman the world has ever known. Leona Helmsley? The corpse belongs to the mother of all vampires, Lilith. And Vincent here is trying to bring her back to life using her heart, which has been split into four prunes, apparently. Yeah, that's a decent effect, but all it's doing is making me wish I was watching the Blob remake right now. How are you doing that? <laughs> what can I say, boys? I know how to turn a woman on. Damn, that's not supposed to happen. Let me guess, you're just a little nervous, right? Eventually Lilith does wake up, and her first action is to reenact the ending to Total Recall, which is another movie I'd rather be watching. Chill, baby. What is that? I don't blame him for not knowing what that is, since it's actually from a good Tales from the Crypt movie. By the way, if you're wondering how the first movie fits in with this one, the answer is... it doesn't, really. In the first movie, the key was a powerful artifact that would cause the end of the world if the demons ever got their hands on it. Whereas here, it's the only thing that keeps Lilith in line. They don't mention anything about Breaker or the demons or anything from the first movie at all. My guess is that they had the key prop lying around and said, Eh, just use it again. Nobody will notice. Best death ever! And then she rips his face off! And she eats him! That's Bill Sadler from the first movie as the mummy, by the way. But unfortunately for us, it's just a cameo. Whatever, though, I'll take it. A little Bill Sadler is better than none at all. I don't suppose this means we could get a Billy Zane cameo, too? Mm. Well, shit. And I don't need to tell you what a piece of shit that was. No, you don't. I know what a piece of shit it was. Hey, come on, guys. We're still at the beginning. Wait until the end to talk about the movie. One only needs to look at the cast to realize that this isn't going to be as good as the first one. Whereas Demon Knight had actors like Billy Zane, William Sadler, and Dick Miller, this movie has Corey Feldman and Dennis Miller. Ah, well, this movie was made in the mid-90s, so I guess we're just lucky Pauly Shore's not in it. Instead, we'll just have to let Corey fulfill the asshole quotient. My sister. Not my parole officer. Yeah, well, a parole officer is exactly what you need. Fuck you. This is what Corey Feldman would look like if he was cast as one of the Lost Boys instead of Edgar Frog. Another difference between this movie and the first one is that while Demon Knight found a good balance between having a sense of humor while still being a horror movie, this one puts a much greater emphasis on gags. Now, this would be perfectly fine if the jokes were any good, but... <laughs> Haha, <laughs> it's funny because balls. Corey and the Nose Ring Gang get accosted by biker Bobcat Goldthwaite here, and I think this actor never met a line he couldn't over deliver. I know a place not too far from here where you could get the best goddamn piece of ass in the whole goddamn world. 
Man, screw chewing the scenery. I think this guy just swallowed it whole. Why don't you get fucked? <laughs> I'm talking about getting fucked so good. Uh, yeah, Corey, if a guy like this comes up to you in a bar and tells you where to go to get laid, don't go! You think there's a party going on inside? I don't know, but if one member of the Adams family opens a door, I'm out of here. But if one member of the Adams family opens a door, I'm out of here. All right, well, I guess I have to use this clip then. Hey, you were expecting maybe uh, the Adams family? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm beginning to think that this place is a little shady. Oh my God, it's a necrophiliac's wet dream. You're at a funeral parlor. What the hell were you expecting? If some creepy guy came up to you and said, hey man, I know a pet store where you can get all the pussy you want. Would you be surprised to find out he meant bestiality? Also, I hardly think this is the time to be testing out that Bordello of Blood theme park ride, fellas. At the end of the ride, the boys find the other thing this movie tries to one-up the first one on. Boobies! Hi, boys. Hi, girl. <laughs> How would you like to take the Skin Express to Tuna Town? So, yeah, whereas the first movie had things like an interesting storyline, characters you actually cared about, and a sense of humor that was funny without overwhelming the rest of the movie, this movie tries to make up for those things with frat boy gags and vampire tits. But I guess I shouldn't complain, right? I mean, at least this movie has boobies in it, right? Oh wait, Demon Knight had tits in it too, you lose Bordello of Blood. The boys decide to go get some lovin', but I'd be careful though. Looks like she's got a case of the neck herpes. Oh, I don't know what to do with myself. Well, I know what I have to do, which is black box this scene. Real sorry, fellas, but if you want to see tits on the internet, just go anywhere else, it's the internet. Do you mind if I cut in? So it turns out the brothel is actually being run by Lilith, who's using it to lure men in and create more vampires. Lilith is played by Angie Everhart, who you may recognize from such movies as... Um... Uh, just give me a second here. Um... Sexual Predator and Executive Target. Come here and show me what you got. Okay. <laughs> And once again, Lilith proves that the quickest way to a man's heart is by physically removing it from his body. And did somebody say puns? Don't eat your heart out, baby. That's my job. Actually, I think the puns are the Crypt Keeper's job, but whatever. Let's see if Corey does any better. You care for a little deep throat. <laughs> okay, I guess death scenes weren't in Corey's contract then. Corey's sister, played by Erica Leniak, who you may recognize from Baywatch and this scene from Under Siege, goes to the police to try and find him. However, all she finds is the movie's star, Dennis Miller. Don't worry, it's SNL Dennis Miller, not Fox News Dennis Miller. Looks like it's time for the meet cute. Now that's just ridiculous. A pretty lady like you being treated like that. I mean, I don't want to get off on a rant here, but law enforcement's treatment of women these days is about as respectful as Ike Turner at a wet t-shirt contest. My name is, uh... Rafe Gutman, Gutman Investigations, I specialize in missing persons. Dennis is playing a private dick here, which is actually against type for him since usually he's a dick in public. No joke, Corey Feldman is on record as saying Dennis was the biggest dick he's ever worked with. Honestly though, Dennis may have been an asshole on set, but as far as I'm concerned, he's one of the best things about this movie. I don't care what anyone thinks, his smarmy don't give a fuck attitude and quips actually made this movie for me. I don't blame you if you don't like him, though. I mean, who finds watching a smug, sarcastic asshole who just makes obscure pop culture references entertaining? I didn't catch Here we go. your name. Catherine. Look, Mr. Gutman. Call me Catherine. I'm not sure that I'm actually ready to hire someone right now. That's okay. I think Dennis is used to hearing that when he tries to get acting roles. And look, he brought her to the movie's premiere. Catherine's a little reluctant at first, but eventually Dennis charms her into hiring him. I don't want paid for my time. I want paid for helping you. Like it or not, Catherine, I'm all you've got. Not true. Kevin Nealon's got an office just down the street. Looks like it's time for Rafe to put his detective skills to the test. Zeke, I'm looking for your friend Caleb. You seen him? I don't know anyone named Caleb. Rafe. And even though I'm not involved with the vampires in any way and have absolutely no reason to be uncooperative, I'm still gonna pretend I don't know him. Eventually, Rafe does find out where Caleb went, which is lucky since apparently his method of getting information out of people is to make them want to kick his ass. You know what? 
step outside. You know, Zeke, uh, not right now. <laughs> Just not in the mood for a blowjob. Again, I stand by my statement that Dennis Miller is the best thing in this movie. Mainly because everybody else just seems to have been told to act as goofy as possible. Look, this guy even has to overact when he puts on sunscreen. Another subplot involves a reverend played by Chris Sarandon, best known for being in Fright Night, which is a vampire movie you all should be watching right now instead of this one. Regarding Chris's character, he's kind of a combination between Jimmy Swaggart and Jimi Hendrix. And the heart of the Jimmy Current World Ministry. Get it? His initials are JC, clearly an homage to John Carpenter, who also made a vampire movie. Mr. Gutman, have you found my brother yet? He and a friend of his evidently went to a local Whorehouse. I figured it would be something like that. Thank you for your time, Mr. Gutman. Uh, your brother is still missing. You might want to look into that. I'm just saying. Ugh. I'm not sure if this is part of the movie or just behind the scenes footage of Dennis Miller in between takes. Sex. Oh, Jesus, not this guy again. You looking for sex? Here's one of my biggest problems with this movie. Billy Zane may have hammed it up in the first movie, but he did so in a way that was charming and entertaining. And he also knew when to dial it the fuck back. With this guy, it's like all of his lines are making him constipated and he's trying as hard as he can to shit them all out. I know a place where you can get the best goddamn piece of ass in the whole goddamn world. I'm trying real hard to deliver that line. Oh, and in case you needed another reminder of what this movie's humor is like. <laughs> ah, it's funny because titties. <laughs> That's funny because fart. Who is that? It's the only actor with some decent jokes in this movie. Let him in, please. I'm here for the uh, Cunningham wake. I'm afraid the wake is closed tonight. Come back tomorrow. Maybe you don't understand me. I'm feeling excruciatingly sad. Is what Dennis Miller said after this movie came out. Dennis gets refused because... The brothel isn't accepting people that night for some reason they never explain. But thankfully, Dennis is a master of martial arts. Movie references. Hey guys, looking for a scalpel for a friend's birthday present? Seen a salesperson? Uh, they're dead. Who are you talking to? Hey, a clue. Now Catherine's bound to care about her missing brother now that she knows his nose ring is gone. I find that at the McCutcheon Mortuary, which also happens to be the McCutcheon Brothel where young men gather to get stiff amongst the stiffs. Unfortunately, most of them end up getting ripped off or even worse. Yeah, if by worse you mean turned into vampires. And wait a second, how does he know it's a brothel? Sure, the guy told him he could get laid there, but he didn't actually see anything once he was inside. Plus, the line about people getting ripped off or worse makes it sound like it's kind of common knowledge that it's a brothel and that this has been going on for a while. Maybe you didn't find Catherine's brother, but if you know about an illegal whorehouse that's engaging in shady activity, you should maybe call the fucking cops, Rafe. Maybe the vampires can make some more sense. Vegetarian. Another vegetarian. I hate vegetarians. Here, baby. This bud's for you. Really, movie? You have a perfect opportunity to do an It's Miller Time joke and you don't do it? For shame, bordello of blood. Rafe goes to check out the brothel again since it's actually open this time, but unfortunately, this guy's there too. <laughs> I just love a man who gives you head and lets you keep it. So, is she just the Crypt Keeper now, or what? Well, hey, this guy's dead and Dennis is still alive. This movie's looking up. You, you are not gonna believe this, but I almost wore that tonight. <gasps> okay, you know what? I'm just gonna say it again. Dennis Miller is the best part of this movie. Hell, in this one shot, we've got the only three reasons to watch this movie. I also like how Dennis uses the same techniques to outwit people as Bugs Bunny. You comfy? Mm-hmm. All right, I hate to be a painful party pooper, but I gotta split, okay? Oh, you fucking idiot. I guess I shouldn't be surprised he didn't notice that, though, since he apparently doesn't see this dead body that was right behind him. I don't know what happened. One minute. I thought I had him, and the next...
But then he kept referencing old Bonanza episodes and using words like inscrutable and capricious. I just couldn't follow him. But it turns out Dennis is even more special than he thinks. Mm, I knew it. That's one in a million. Very rare, this blood type. Yeah, what's that? Type B sarcastic? Oh, we gotta keep him alive. I know, he's the most entertaining actor in this. It is a shame that being in the movie's driven him to drink, though. The hell are you? The name's Lilith, and you left this behind. You know, I saw you back at the house, and when I did, I knew you were special. Funny, that's also what Dennis says every time he looks in a mirror. I'm reasonably sure you're the type of woman who's never heard the expression half-cocked, but that is exactly what this gun is, and I swear to God I'll use it. You wouldn't shoot these now, would you? Yeah, judging by his facial expression, I think he'd probably like to shoot something on them. Whoa, Catherine, don't go! I'm surprised I'm the sex symbol in this movie, too! Well, looks like it's time to go to the cops, Rafe. How do I know it's a whorehouse? I was there. How's that? I also somehow knew it was a brothel before I actually saw it was a brothel, but we'll just go ahead and forget about that part. Dennis takes Deputy Doofy here to investigate, but those crafty vampires have changed things up so there's no evidence. You know, you almost had me believing you. It would have served me right for getting involved with a liar. And an asshole. But a charming asshole! Hey, it's okay, Dennis. I think you're a charming asshole. By the way, if you're wondering how the Reverend and the key fit into all this, it turns out JC has the key and is using Lilith and the brothel as part of a scheme to kill sinners. I would have thought using her to kill murderers would be a more righteous cause, but apparently killing guys looking to get laid are at the top of this guy's list of priorities. Also, I think JC's confusing church with an Alice Cooper concert. What's going on with you, man? You I don't say, I don't know why they have that damn laser light turned up, Sahak. So hey, come on, they gotta use something to kill Lilith at the end. Oh, and, uh, JC, bad idea to piss off somebody with access to the only thing keeping an unstoppable she-demon in check. Well, it's been about ten minutes, so here's some more tits. Yeah, there's a good way to be incognito at a strip club rev. Just dress like you're there to flash people. Let's see if JC can put his negotiating skills to the test. Vincent, Vincent give me the key. What's the magic word? Well, congratulations, Vincent. You just destroyed the only reminder of how to do a good Tales from the Crypt movie. While this is going on, we get to see some more of Rafe's stunning detective work. Cat one from 280 pounds to 114 pounds in three days. What's wrong with this picture? You mean besides the fact that you're apparently talking to nobody? Aha! I knew there were headless bodies in that place where I saw headless bodies before. Jackpot! You know, it's too bad this movie wasn't made today. Then he could just text Catherine the pictures and maybe try sneaking in a dick pic. I don't want you to flee the room here. I'm going to advance a weird Dukovnian riff. What if what we're dealing with here is, in fact, vampires? I don't know. I think a New Orleans zombie romp might be a better idea. Also, wasn't Corey Feldman in this movie? Hello? Catherine, is that you? Caleb? It's Caleb. I need your help. I'm in trouble. They want me to do Ninja Turtles 4! I'm, I'm at the old power plant on the south side. You know, Catherine, I'm not complaining, but I wish your brother would have picked a less creepy place. I feel like I'm in a Bad Tales from the Crypt episode. <laughs> no, Dennis. You're in a Bad Tales from the Crypt movie. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the easiest joke I've ever done on this show. Hey look, Corey Feldman really did become a lost boy. And in the following sequence, we get to see why Dennis Miller is easily the most underrated action star of the 90s. This is a mistake! Ooh, sorry Dennis, but Johnny Weissmuller you're not. By the way, I'm only referencing Johnny Weissmuller because I think that's what Dennis would have wanted. Catherine gets captured by the vampires while Rafe is taken to the hospital and put in some restraints that he easily escapes from. Tammy! No, oh, no, Rafe. Vampires are killed by stakes to the heart, not IVs to the head. You want to try to keep it down here, please? I'm trying to rest. I knew I should have taken that private room. You should have taken a cameo in the first movie is what you should have done. 
Oh no, look what the vampires are doing to Catherine. They're making her watch while Lilith gropes her body double. JC tries to confront Lilith, which doesn't go so well, but fortunately, Rafe's got his back. Oh yeah! Talk to me, I'm feeling a little jumpy, friend or foe! For God's sake, I am responsible for all this, but I've come to end it! Give you this. In later interviews, Dennis Miller said that his fondest memory of this movie was filming this scene where he and Chris Sarandon shoot up the vampire prostitutes with super soakers. Gee, I wonder why. You know, watching this scene, maybe it really is appropriate that this movie was released the same month as Women's Equality Day. Rafe rescues Catherine, and they decide to use the church's TV studio to tell the world about the vampires. Except they don't have any proof at this point, so it would just be them saying that vampires are real with nothing to back it up. Not really sure what they're hoping to accomplish here. But fortunately for them, Lilith comes along to give them some proof. So you want to fuck? No, Lilith, I'd rather crazy glue my dick to the bullet train than fuck you. How's that? Hey, careful, Rafe. This is a Tales from the Crypt movie. I wouldn't be giving her any ideas. And gee, I wonder what they could possibly use to defeat Lilith here. Hmm... <laughs> So the laser defeats Lilith and... Bye! I guess Reverend Limptic forgot to tell you. You can tear my heart to pieces, but it won't do any good. If it's still here. I know, who makes up all these rules? Uh-oh, looks like the laser turned Lilith into an extra from Night of the Demons. Maybe this means she'll make Dennis eat a bowl of fuck. <laughs> Alright, we all know you're gonna finish her off with a pun, so... Let's hear it. Heartless bitch. And so Lilith is defeated and Ray finally gets to celebrate his bar mitzvah or something. Now here's another big difference between this movie and the first one. Demon Knight ended with Billy Zane's character defeated, but the key still needing protection from other evil forces. It wrapped up the story while still giving the impression that the struggle between good and evil would continue indefinitely. Meanwhile, this movie ends with a twist that you can see coming from a mile away. What's that perfume you're wearing? It's not perfume. It's sunblock. Ah, I said no teeth, damn it! Normally I'd want to wrap up the Crypt Keeper portions as quickly as possible, but this time he's actually one of the least goofy characters in this movie. Come on, let's play again. Huh? Take my advice, pal. Quit while you're ahead. <laughs> yeah, you won't be laughing once you see the movie's box office, Crypty. Bordello of Blood bombed in theaters, making only $5 million back from a $15 million budget, which effectively cancelled the planned third movie of the intended trilogy. And... yeah, I can kind of see why. Whereas the first movie had a good balance between comedy and horror, Bordello of Blood puts an emphasis on gags which are usually somewhere between a frat house and an 11 year old discovering a CD of fart noises. Another asset Demon Knight had was that its cast was full of good actors who played characters that you actually ended up caring about. Other than Dennis Miller, I don't give a shit about a single person in this movie. And the only reason I like Dennis is because his attitude is basically, yeah, sure, I'll do a Tales from the Crypt movie, what the fuck? And even he isn't as entertaining as Billy Zane was in the first movie. The movie still has some fun moments, and I don't think it's quite as bad as some critics make it out to be, but it is definitely a huge step down from the first movie, and it's disappointing that it prematurely ended what was once a promising series. Of course, that's just my opinion. I could be wrong. Well, that's all for now, but tune in next time where I review the third and final Tales from the Crypt movie. Oh yeah, remember that thing I said earlier about this movie ending the series? I lied.